you know it's being recorded. Miriam, I'll tell you why you don't want to resume back. Yes. You hold on. I want to time. I'm because of national I don't want to Because of national I don't want to resume. No problem now. Yes, Matia. Yes. One at a time. One at a time, please. Yes, Roger. Why are you not expecting me to be what I'm saying? Hold on, please. The teachers, the minders of the school will not, will not expose you to anything. That's what I'm saying. Apart from that, excuse me now. Apart from that, the executive committee of PTA will be in school today. I think today or tomorrow to satisfy that the school is ready for Oh, I'm still talking. So then, of course, you can't tell me that this place is as conducive as you were in the school. Right? So, you going to be so, yes, you going to be yes, yes, that is the school in the perfect condition. Perfect. You cannot have it perfect anyway. Even at home, you cannot be perfect. So, then, so we have just started, we have just started, we have just started this. So we can't have it same thing. We cannot have it all that we said anyway. It's not possible. Hold on. I can ask if the jail is working in NTI. Why are you doing that? No, that's actually answer to the question. One at a time, please. Yes. 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 Now let's start. Yes. Yes. What about the smart board? So does it mean we don't go back to that smart board to teach? Why do people what your reasoning somehow? Why? NCIC is an international school of refuge standards. So, Hello. We have not started, you know. Now, for the correction, let me see. Of Esther, please. Come on, come on. Patia, we are waiting for you. Okay. Now that you have you have given us the prize. So let's ask a question one. Meanwhile, let me check your own suit. What did you not have my guy Yes.
What is the ratio of their height? Of course, height is a line. So, ratio of height is the linear scale factor. You are given the volumes of these two uh, boxes. So, that means the volume scale factor, which is given by B2, is equal to the linear scale factor is the power of 3. The volume of the first one is 250 centimeters cube. Then, the second is 54 centimeters cube. So, 250 over 54 is equal to 81 over 8 raised to power 3. By the time you move the power of 3 at the left hand at the right hand side, it becomes the cube root at the left hand side. So cube root of 1, she reduced this to a simpler form. She divided by 2. 2 divided 250 is 125. And 2 divided 54 gives you 27. So that, that's how she arrived at 125 over 27. And of course, the cube root of 125 is 5. That's the number you multiply by 7 in three places to get 125. That is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 will give 125. So that the cube root of 125 is 5. And the cube root of 27 is 3. And that means 3 times 3 times another will give you 27. So that means cube root is 27. So the ratio of the height is uh, 5 to 3. Ratio 5 to 3. Yes. The second question now, that's B. Second question. So bad. Come on, answer the second question. What is the ratio of their surface area? She already got the linear scale factor. So that's that should assist generally. She already got the linear scale factor. That should assist with the area scale factor. Okay, area scale factor is square of linear scale factor. Okay, you knew. Sorry. Yes, I just remember. You're getting it, yeah. A one over A two equals of H one over A two squared. That's it, boy. Thank you. So, of course, what you are being asked, the second question is the, the ratio of the service area. That is the area scale factor. Please, yes. Well, you know, the second question is area scale factor. I would say area scale factor is the square of linear scale factor. Because height is a line, so that the ratio of the height is the linear scale factor. So that means area scale factor, that is A1 over A2, is equal to H1 over A2 raised to the power of 2. So this is our H1 over A2, that is 5 over 3. That is 5 over 3 raised to the power 2, that's 27, 25 over 9. Please, hold on. A1 over A2 is 25 over 9. So the ratio of the service area is 25 to 9. Okay, the second question now. If you check this question number two, I added the second part, it's B. It wasn't there yesterday. When I was copying the question, I'm typing it from the textbook, I omitted the question B, so I added that. So that means it's not in your solution. 
Then, question number two, a cylinder is eight centimeters high and its base diameter is four centimeters. The height of a similar cylinder is 12 centimeters. Then the first question, find the diameter of the base of the larger cylinder. Look at it, let's give an illustration of this question. Is anyone right, uh, anyone that's writing the text? Okay. Let's say you have this, the first cylinder, yeah. Then the height is eight. That's six centimeters. The diameter of the base is four centimeters. That's the first cylinder. But the second cylinder, we tell you, the height of the second cylinder is twelve. That means the second cylinder is bigger than this, the larger one. So that means the height. That means we can say this is. Uh, so the height here is 12, and the diameter is not known. That's the question. The first question says, find the diameter of the base of the larger cylinder. I can label this one to be H1. That's the height of the first one, H1. And the height of the second one is H2. Then the base diameter of the first one is our D1. This is D1. And this one we are looking for is H2. Then, we said in a set of similar figures, get up. In a set of similar figures, please, the ratio of corresponding size must be equal. What are the corresponding size now? The height of the first one corresponds to the height of the second one. And similarly, the base of the first one also corresponds to the base of the second one. And so that means that we can form the ratio of the corresponding size. Rotate, are you this side? Okay, so that means our G1 over G2, that's the ratio of the diameters, but equal to the ratio of the height, because they are corresponding sides. That means equal to H1 over H2. So, our D1 is 4, this is 4 centimeters, D2 is the unknown, that's over G2. Then H1 is 8 centimeters, over H2 is 12 centimeters. Centimeter by centimeter out. Then we cross multiply and make D to the subject. Our D2 will be equal to 4 cm times 12 all over 8. And 4 is 1, 4 is 2. 2 divided by 12 will give you 6. That means the diameter of this larger cylinder is 6 centimeters. <laughs> and that answers the first question. So find the, uh, what is it? For find the diameter of the base of the larger cylinder. The diameter of the base of the larger cylinder is 6 centimeters. Don't forget the diameter of the base of the first one is 4 cm, so this is the larger one. Then the second question, which as I, I added that just this morning, is what is the ratio of the volume of the larger cylinder to that of the smaller cylinder? The ratio of the volume of the larger cylinder. You check that the larger one is always 2. The diameter is D2, the height is also D2. So that means the volume may also be B2. Whereas the volume of this one is B1. So we said the ratio of the volume of the larger one to that of the smaller one. What we are looking for is V2 over V1. This is it. Yes. Are we together? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then, you know that volume scale factor is a cube of linear scale factor. There are, you can use the ratio of the height. That's linear scale factor. You can also, as well use the ratio of the diameters. It's also a linear scale factor. Any one of these can be used. You must get the same answer. So it is either I use V2 over V1 is equal to D2 over D1 raised to the power of filling. Because volume scale factor is cube of linear scale factor. But please take note. You cannot use V2 over V1 and say this is D1 over D2. They are not corresponding here. So that means our D2 is, we got this one as 6. And this is 4, so that is 6 over 4 raised to the power of 3. 6 over 4 can be reduced to a smaller 4. 2 can go that way, 3 over 2 raised to the power of 3. So that is 27 over 8. So the ratio of the volume of the larger one to the smaller one is 27 to 8. That is if you even if you use the height, you get the same answer. Let's confirm that. If you use this, P2 over V1 is equal to H2. H2 over H1 raised to the power of 3. Yeah. 
I mean, it gets built over, but that's the ratio of the volume. Yes. Good, that's a good question. So why is it not V1 over V2? Why V2 over V1? Okay, good. Someone is answering the question, yes? Because that's the question. Say, so what is the ratio of the volume of the larger cylinder to that of the smaller cylinder? So the larger one comes first. Thank you very much. That was a very good one. Please clap for him now. Okay, that's why it's V2 over V1 because our larger cylinder is what we level to. We check the height is H2, the diameter is V2, the volume was also the V2 as well. Sir, so if we said smaller, if you should say smaller, larger, that means the diameter also changes. Yes. It should be V1 over V2. So if you use, want to confirm that, you know, it's we use the diameter, the ratio of the diameter as linear step factor, and we got 27 to 8. Let's use the ratio of the height as well, whether we are going to get the same answer, because height is also a line. So the ratio of the height is the linear step factor. So our, now, that will be V1. Our H2 there is 12. Maybe this is 12, and the height of the point for this thing. This is 12. Then if you divide through by four, that will take you three over two. This is about three. So it is 27 to eight. So that will be the ratio of the volume of the larger cylinder to that of the smaller one is 27 to eight. Any question? Okay. Why so, some people are still writing? Let's check what we did earlier. Yes, Alaudin. If you know the Sorry, is there anyone there? Nobody? So I have a question for you. <laughs> yes, how do you find the area of this triangle? It was from Layers. Can you say the image from the Thank you. The area is the square root of S. It's S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. And now to find S is the S is A plus B plus C. Over what? Okay, thank you. Yes, Itma. Itma, yes. Why do I need your face? Because you said something. What did you say? No, I had no face. So, if you're here, Itma, if you are in this, I had this question yesterday. If this sector is bent to form this pole, this is L, this is R, and this is R. What is the formula for the base radius of the pole? Yes, Miriam Kuranga. R is equal to theta L. What is L representing? Yeah, it's land height of the pole, which is the same as the base as the radius of the sector of the sector. What? Yes, I said if if you look at this is what you can do. What the piece of paper in this Keep this point A. At this point B, bring A and B together, you are going to form a cone. A and B will form a, a hollow cone. A hollow cone means a cone that's not covered at base. That's all inside. That's the hollow cone. Then, in fact, this is an arc. Is that not? It is the length of this arc that forms the circumference of the base of the cone. And what's the for length of an arc? It's about 360 degrees times 2 pi r. Our r is L. That is the radius of that sector. Then we have said it's the base circumference of this pole. 
That is equal to 2 pi r, where r is the base root of the Divide both sides by 2 pi. This is divided by 2 pi. I mean, r here will be consistent with the L over 3 six. And that's it. Yes. <laughs> okay, now let's see. We move on to the addition and subtraction of area and volumes of solid shape. Addition and subtraction of area and volume of solid shape. And that's why we have we have composite solid sheet. Then we have all those solid sheets. So if you have a pipe, a pipe, let's say a metallic pipe or maybe plastic pipe, it is a hollow cylinder, meaning that there is hole inside. But if you have even this now, let's say this shape here. Let's say this shape, for instance. How many how many uh, solid sheets are combined there to form this? What are the two? Semi-circle. Okay, a semi-square or only any square. And a cylinder. The lower part of this shape is a cylinder. It is covered by a hemisphere. So this is a composite solid shape. It's a composite shape. There's another one there. Let's see this. For instance, if I want to find the volume of this. If I want to find the volume of this shape, what am I supposed to Volume, volume. Find the volume of the hemisphere and add to the volume of the cylinder because it's a composite solid. Let's see another one here. You have this, yes? Good. A rectangle is solid. And a cuboid or a cube. A cuboid, cuboid. So even it's even written there. Say, this figure shows a composite solid consisting of a cube. The lower part of this shape is a cube. The lower part is a cube. Why I should said now the upper part is a it's a square based pyramid. It's a square based pyramid. So it's also a composite solid shape. Okay, so now let's go back to this. Now, we have said that uh, we can have a composite solution, which is a combination of two solid shapes. Sorry. Don't worry. By this time on Monday. So, Okay, now example number one. You want to? What about you? Pass the ruler. Example number one. A cylindrical drain pipe. A cylindrical drain pipe has internal and external diameters of 6.4 cm and 7.4 centimeters respectively. It's a drain pipe that it has hold for the water to pass. So that means it is a hollow cylinder. That's the major thing. There. A hollow cylinder now means you have two cylinders together. Then you can keep them. It's is it 14? Yes, Are you sure? Yes. Ah, are you very sure? Okay. Let me now, let's see. This is, we have the pipe. Papa, 
This is the brain pipe. Broken sit up now. Now, a cylindrical drain pipe has internal and external diameter. The external diameter is this. Can you stop to letter G for the external diameter? And that is given to you as a 7.6 centimeter. The external is 7.6, the internal is 6.4. That means from this outer, this outer part, this is the diameter, which is the capital D. Then, of course, to get the radius now, radius is half of that diameter. From here to there. This is R. So meaning that our capital, which is external radius, this is external diameter, this is external radius. The external radius is 7.6 divided by 2, and that's 3.8 centimeter. Then, we are also given that the internal diameter, that, that means from this point to here is the internal diameter, that's not letter G. So that means this, yeah? That means here. <laughs> internal diameter here is a 6.4 centimeter. And to get the internal radius, that is from here to this place is the internal radius. So that means internal radius R. That's 6.4 divided by 2. And that's 3.2 centimeter. But the question now calculate the volume of meter per meter. What is of per meter there? Calculate the volume of meter. Per meter in the pipe. What's been of per meter? What is it? Yeah? Thank you. That's one meter. That means the length of this pipe is one meter. One meter. One meter. So that means the length, you only, you only concerned with one meter length of this pipe. So it means our length there, yeah, L. Which is length of a cylinder is the same as the height. It depends on the, the way you place your cylinder. If it is vertical like this, this is a cylinder, that means this is height. But if it is this way, like this, then this is the length. So the length is the same as the height of a cylinder. So the length of this cylinder where I want to find the volume is one meter. Then, if you check here, uh, the length is in meter, why the radius is in centimeter? From the ghetto. Why the ghetto is raised to your ghetto for this Then, the length is one meter, get up and this one. Who down your hands? Why your sister? So it means the length is one meter. <laughs> yes, okay. How many centimeters do you have in one meter? Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Now, the question now, how do I find volume of this meter? Not the volume of the pipe, the volume of the meter that is speaking to the pipe. What are we supposed to do? Anyone? To find the volume, this is the meter. The second part is the meter. This meter is between two cylinders. You have the outer cylinder, which is the bigger one. That is from here. In this place, the outer cylinder. And you have the inner one, which is the smaller one. This place. Yes, we subtract. Thank you. That was a good one. So it means volume of meter. Subtract the volume of the larger, the smaller cylinder from the, or with the internal from the external. That volume of metal in the pipe. Yes. You read your hand. I didn't solve it, but so you have to follow there. So volume of metal in the pipe. Yeah. This volume of external cylinder 
So volume of metal in the pipe is volume of external cylinder minus volume of internal cylinder. Yes, Baba, what is the formula for volume of the cylinders? <laughs> Let's go. Yes, Alima, what is the formula for volume of the cylinder? You are the first person to learn. Answer the question. Answer the question. <laughs> My arms were <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. Uh, so why do I have this? So, someone told me that the fact I had to move from there. Uh, I had to fact that I had to move Okay. Sit down. Sit down. Okay. One of the cylinder is five arrows squared. Okay. Then the length of this pipe is the same as the height. So we use pi. The radius of the external cylinder is capital letter R. That's fine. Capital R, correct? Then the height is L minus pi. The radius of the internal cylinder is small letter R. That's R squared, and the length is L. If you check, it, we have common factor. Pi is common. L is also common. So factor out by L. So you have the R squared minus R squared. Then. This is difference of two squares. It will be easier for you to have express as difference of two squares. Yeah. So this time this is pi L, then you have R minus R, R plus R. Then let's put it the, we are giving the value of pi to be 22 over 7. Our L is 100 centimeters. That is Capital R is 3.8. Capital R is 3.8. What is small R is 3.2. That means 3.8 minus 3.2. Then 3.8 is 3.2. Minus 3.2. And don't forget the unit is centimeter squared. So that means it's going to be 22 by 7 times 100 times if you subtract it, it gets 0.6. 0.6, the whole of this. So that means let's put the unit at four. This is 101, 0.6 here, then this is 70. Then of course, this 7 divides the So you are left with 22 times 1.60 And that's what we do so that means the volume of metal in this pipe is 1320 centimeters cubed. Any question there? Any question there? Then, there is a second question B. Calculate, calculate the mass of the pipe if it's made of metal density 8 grams per centimeter cubed. Yes. Yes, okay. Then, no, no. Are they all you? What's the formula for what's the formula for next mass density and volume? Okay, anyone? Okay. Density is got to mass over volume. Even from the unit of density, this is at this is gram per centimeter cube. Gram, that is mass. That's unit of mass. Centimeter cube is the unit of volume. So that means density is mass over volume. And that is here we have. Is there one there? Yes. Okay, so let's squeeze it. B. Density is equal to mass of our volume. Yes. Density is equal to mass of our So the density is given to you as 8 grams per centimeter cube. Or to make mass the subject, just cross multiply because we are looking for mass. So that means here, uh, mass is density times the volume. Mass is density times volume. The density is given to you. The volume we got that just now. So that means this is going to give you x grams of our centimeters cube times 1320 centimeters cube. Centimeter cube divides centimeter cube out there. So you are left with 8 times 
1,320 grams. Yes. This is zero. Eight times two is fifteen. Bring one. This is twenty-four plus one is twenty-five, and this is a ten. Ten thousand five hundred and sixty grams. Then you can go further. You can take it to kilograms. Yes, Rihanna. How many grams make one kilogram? It is better. One thousand. Then how do that change from gram to kilogram? Rihanna again. Kilogram. What are you supposed to do? Divide by one thousand. That means the master. I want to put the diagram. I said I didn't I didn't solve on the slide, please. You have to copy from there. You can join this. Okay. <laughs> So it is 10.56 kilograms. As fast as possible. Ah. <laughs> A solid body consists of a cylinder surmounted by a hemisphere of the same radius. Papacito. The total length of the body measured along the central axis of the cylinder is 10 centimeters. If the radius of the hemisphere is x centimeters, show that the volume, which is V in centimeters cube, of the solid body is given by this formula. The first thing, let's draw a diagram to show this, the, the information given to it. Yeah, it's a, it's a composite solid shape. Consists of two basic solid shapes. You have, the lower part is a cylinder. It is surmounted by a hemisphere. That means the hemisphere is on top of the cylinder. And they have the same, the base radius of the cylinder is the same as the radius of the hemisphere. That's the information given. It says, a solid body consists of a cylinder Surmounted so by hemisphere, that means the hemisphere is on the cylinder, and they have the same radius. The total length, the total length of the whole body as a whole, that is both the cylinder as well as the hemisphere, the total length is 10 centimeters. <laughs> then if the radius of the hemisphere is x, show that the volume of the whole body is a v, which is pi x cubed over 3, then into 30 minus x. But let's see. Okay, I drew it here. You can draw. This is the shape. Okay. Put it. I want to believe nobody is still writing with us. So yeah, if you check, I will stop right now. Everyone, I'm Papa, 
money to be member to be part of this trust. <laughs> this is the I mean, this is this feeling that being surmounted by the hemisphere. This is the feeling that was. So the hemisphere is all the feeling that, and that means now you have this. <laughs> so this is the solution. The hemisphere, the thing that is being surmounted by the hemisphere. So that must sit up. Then the total length, the total length of the whole solid shape is 10. This is the total length of the whole solid shape. From this top down here, that is 10. Then, I'm waiting for you. You want me? I will go now. Go, go, go. I'm waiting for you. How could I not take it out? Anyone? No problem. I will see you there. So then you are told that the radius of the hemisphere is X. The radius is X. Let me check. The radius of this hemisphere is the same as the radius of the cylinder. That means this is also X. Now, Yes, uh, along that is. What's the relationship between the radius and the height of the hemisphere? We I, I we did that just as the beginning. The relationship between the height and the radius of the hemisphere. Because this is yes. What is the relationship between the radius and the height of the hemisphere? Okay, anyone please? Yes, they are equal. The radius of the hemisphere, I think I gave it before. Yesterday I asked a question of that and I explained it again. If you check here, this is uh, this is the hemisphere. This is the center of that radius any straight that joins the center to the second point. From here to here is radius. From here to here is radius. I will check in the actual plan. This is height. And that means the radius is the same as the height of the hemisphere. Which means that if you check it now, if this is radius, then from there, this place, you see the, you see X. Then, yes, Ore Olua. Ore Olua, sorry, Ore Olua. What is the height of this cylinder now? This diagram, what is the height of the cylinder? 10 minus X, because if you check, the total height is 10. And from here, this place is X. So I'm not get the height, that's height of the cylinder alone is from this point here. And like she writes, so you are subtracting the upper part, which is already the cylinder, the ice hemisphere. That means the height of this cylinder is 10 minus x. Then, how do you find the volume of the solid shape at zero? What are we supposed to do to find the volume of this solid shape? This composite solid shape. What are we supposed to do to find the volume of this composite solid shape? Sorry, can you speak louder? The volume of the sphere, there is no sphere here. The hemisphere. Now, the volume of the solid shape is volume of the hemisphere plus volume of the cylinder. I, 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 need, I need, you need to look for something. <laughs> Okay, okay. Oh, can you get up for recognition? Someone there wants to see. <laughs> okay, let's continue, please. Let's go. Abdullah, you are not part of this class. You are sleeping. Abdullah, what's the formula for volume of the hemisphere? Can you please keep quiet? Abdullah. <coughs> I saw you sleeping. So, in order to bring you back to the class, you answer the question. What is the formula for the volume of the hemisphere? Salaudin, you are disturbing. Okay, yes, Laiman. The formula for the volume of the hemisphere. So, I'll tell you. Volume of the solid shape 
So volume of the heavy step plus volume of the cylinder. So volume of the heavy step is 2 over 3 pi R Q. Yes, you want the what's the formula for volume of the cylinder? Pi R squared. Now, you want the what's the problem? Ask me the question. So then, if you check that this is 2 over 3. I, the radius of the hemisphere is x, and that means it's x cube. X yes. and pi. The radius of the cylinder is also x. That's x squared times the radius that the height of the cylinder is 10 minus x. So that means it's 10 minus x. Any question to this point? So that means this is giving us 2 over 3 pi x cube. Plus, then you remove the bracket here. By x squared times x times 10, that's 10 by x squared. Then by x squared times under x, minus 5 x cubed. Then we check we have common factor, we have like terms. 5 x cubed, 5 x cubed. They are like, so bring them together. That means this becomes 2 and 3 by x cubed, minus 5 x cubed, plus 10. By x squared. Then, of course, uh, if you check this one, they lose. The LCM is 3. 3 divided will give you 1 times 2 pi x cubed is 2 pi x cubed. The denominator you know, can be written as 1. 1 divided by 3 will give you 3. Science t will give you minus 3 pi x cubed. Don't forget this plus 10 by x uh, even let's make it a snow bracket. Sorry, that means instead of bringing this all together again, you know, so let's just do it. You can write this as one, one, two, one, two, one. So that means it's continuous. Okay. This now plus 30 by x. Okay. Then, at the numerator, what is common? I can write this to be 30, hold up, 35 x squared minus 5 x cubed. Please, these two are alike. So, 2 pi x cubed minus 3 pi x will be minus pi x cubed. So, I brought the positive 10 to come before the negative 1. So, I brought 35 x squared first. So, that's what I did there. Then we can now factorize and illuminate what is common. Pi x is common. Sorry, pi x squared. So that means here, yeah, I want to continue there. So that means it's a pi x squared and into over what? Then I can yes. There is a Okay, let me see. I think it's page. Okay, please. The question itself change this to pi x squared, not x cubed. You can check page uh, 29. This question we are solving is a question 6, page 29. So it is pi x squared, not pi x cubed. It should be pi x squared. Page 29, question 6 is what we are doing. So that means now I can bring this theory out because this theory is common. It's a common denominator. I can bring it out of this bracket. That means this can be written as pi 
x squared over 3, then what you have left is 30 minus x. And that is shown. Yeah. Again, I want to re explain this. You are given this a solid body consists of a cylinder surmounted by a heavy scale. For those that want to stand that, you don't care this. So, this is the diagram. You can see the cylinder under that is surmounted by a heavy scale. Then you are told that the total height, the total height of the solid shape, the total length of the body measured along the central axis of the cylinder is 10. And that's why you have this. The total height of it is 10 centimeters. And of course, you are told that the radius of the cylinder of the heavy square is x centimeters. This is the radius of the heavy square, which is also the radius of the cylinder. Yeah. Then we know that the radius of the heavy square is the same as the height. That's why the height is also x. The what? The question. Then it says show that the volume of the solid body is given by pi x squared is changed to pi x squared, not q. The power of x there should be 2. And you can confirm that from the A. It's also just a typographic error. So that means now, since this solid shape, the composite solid shape that consists of two basic solid shapes, Alima, this is the body. So we have the hemisphere and you have the cylinder. That's why I started there that the volume of the solid shape is volume of the hemisphere. Uh, Nasir, sit up. Volume of hemisphere plus volume of cylinder. Of course, volume of the hemisphere is 2 by 3 pi r q. Why the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared a? Then put the volume, the parameters given to you. The radius of the hemisphere is x. That's why you have x. The radius of the cylinder is also x, whereas the height of the cylinder is 10 minus x. I showed you that. Now, consider the total length is 10, and the height of the hemisphere is x. The remaining item, which is for the cylinder, is a 10 minus x. So that's why you have the height is 10 minus x. Then, this is still remaining 2 over 3 pi, r, pi x q plus, then I remove the bracket here. Pi x squared times 10, that's 10 pi x squared. Pi x squared times minus x, that's minus pi x q. Then, I move this one up because they are alive. So this is 2 over 3 pi x cubed minus pi x cubed plus 10 pi x squared. So this, I mean, it's a fraction by putting 1 as a denominator. As well, 1 as a denominator. So you have three fractions here. The denominators are 3, 1, and 1. So that's the So 3 divided by 3 will give you 1. 1 times 2 pi x cubed will give you 2 pi x cubed. 1 divided by 3 is 3. 3 times pi x cubed, that's 3 pi x cubed. 1 divided 3 is 3 times 10 pi x squared. That's 30 pi x squared. Then these two are alike. You can add or subtract like 10. 2 pi x cubed minus pi x cubed minus pi x cubed. So I brought the negative one before the positive. So negative come after the positive. So this 30 pi x squared, which is positive, comes first. Then minus pi x cubed, all over 3. Then from there, I move this point. At the numerator, pi is a common factor. X squared is also a common factor. So you have pi x squared. So if you have factors of pi x squared, you have 30 remaining there in those, and only x remaining there. So that's why you got 30 minus x. Don't forget the denominator is still there. Because the denominator is a common denominator, it's close to this and this. You can bring it up in the bracket. And that's why I got pi x squared over 3. Then you have 30 minus x, which is what you are doing. Any question? One question, class one. No, we say I will just touch this one. No. Okay. One person last one. That's a request, and I don't like calling down request. That was I said, Okay, now two questions assignment. This is question number one, and this is number two. 
Well, you are right. I want to check the, uh, the chance from this class. So, sit down with class is This is question number one. <laughs> Assignments. Okay, then the second one. I told you what this and then keep you. First question, then. then this is the second question. Yes. Oh, I we are going to run. 